Hello and welcome to the IdeaCast interview series, episode number 70. My guest in this episode is Chrissy Cordingly. And Chrissy had spent a couple decades as a human resources professional working with corporations uh, around safety issues and other uh, human resource related things. <clears throat> she uh, had become ill. She was diagnosed with a, an autoimmune, autoimmune condition and that changed her life around quite drastically. And so as part of her recovery, she became a certified international health coach. She launched uh, some media platforms, including a podcast show. I was fortunate enough to be a guest on her show. We had a beautiful conversation there. I can uh, set it up in the description field for you to, to find that. We will have her link tree down below so that you can discover all her, her platforms and her social media. Uh, so we talk in this conversation about physical and mental health, about autoimmune disease, about recovery, resilience, thriving, having a sense of humor, getting out in the world and being social. Uh, it's a very personal conversation. Um, she is uh, perfectly fine with uh, and open with sharing about mental and physical health, as am I. So if that makes uh, for a good means of whetting your appetite, then please come along. And I appreciate your uh, being an audience member. Thank you so much. And also feel free to leave a comment down below if you wish about autoimmune or uh, health or recovery. We would appreciate that. I'd like to welcome Chrissy Cordingly to the IdeaCast interview series. I'm looking forward to um, a nice flowing conversation. This is going to be less of an interview, and you'll know why in a minute, YouTube audience. But Chrissy, welcome. I'm so <laughs> glad to have you on my show. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. I'm so excited to chat again. It's going to be yes. fun. I'm really yes. excited. Yes. Yes. And to the YouTube audience, you heard again. And so I will reveal that uh, about a, about two months ago in uh, January, I was on Chrissy's show and we're going to talk about her show, uh, the flare up show. I will have a link down below for all of her uh, social media, all relevant uh, contact uh, and, and content information will be down in the description field. And that episode will be embedded in um, in her podcast series. And it's the first one of 2023. If you're curious, we had a really nice conversation over there. I did most of the yapping, but today it's Chrissy's turn in the guest seat. So, so, and speaking of that, I'm going to shush now because uh, no, yes, to the audience, no, yeah. Excited. So Chrissy, I think for my audience, and there was some crossover because I promoted our conversation with, I think my Facebook people and it yes. um, hopefully, and, and I noticed on your YouTube that there was some response. And I think that's some of the people. So there may be some familiarity uh, with some of the audience, but let's go ahead and assume that some people haven't seen that conversation <laughs> or heard it and let's yeah, get, know, let's get to it, know you. Yeah. It seems like Floridians have really nice audiences because there are two of you that I've interviewed from Florida over the last three months and okay. both were like the top listened to. Oh. So you guys really have nice followings out there. So that's okay, good, cool. good. Yeah. Yeah. My Facebook yeah. people and, uh, you know, they're mostly people I know from meditation conferences and doing, mm -hmm. uh, self-improvement kind of work. And so, yeah, we get, I get, I get along with a lot of them and they're great people. And so I, you know, props to you guys, if you're watching, <laughs> you know who you are and to my YouTube subscribers who aren't necessarily from that background uh i love and admire you guys for subscribing uh, oh, not because definitely. i make money on the channel but just that you show up and, <laughs> right yes yeah. it's a genuine love it's not like oh you know get nord vpn and you know help help me pay my rent you know, it's like they're here for you know so yeah anyway, I'll yeah <laughs> no, that's all good. It's all good. So who yeah. am I? So I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Most people, when they hear that, they either go where or, <laughs> ooh, it's cold. So usually one of those two options. Yeah. Winnipeg, um, they make the traveling RVs, right? The Winnipegos or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I no. I don't know. We're, we're <laughs> Winnebagos. That's what you're thinking. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, fun fact, because Disney World's in Florida, Winnie the Pooh was named after Winnipeg. Which oh, actually me. Has, yeah, because oh. it was based on a, a story of a soldier that befriended a bear, and he was from Winnipeg. So okay. he named his, his bear friend Winnie, which was kind of cool, and that's where Winnie the Pooh came from. So Nice. Yeah, but... Uh, or the Winnipeg Jets sports people know that we have the wonderful sports team the Winnipeg Jets and uh Winnipeg actually is a great city it gets a bad rap and sometimes it has some bad press but it, it's it's beautiful like it's beautiful. there's so many beautiful things to see here I was telling you because I know you love botany about um a new feature we have in one of our big parks uh Cinnabon Park which is really similar to St. James Park in London it looks very similar and it's um they just put in the leaf, which is a big brand new botanical mm. garden. And it's like the biggest sunroom you've ever seen in your whole life. And there's butterfly gardens and plant mm. gardens. And it's, yeah, it's 
really, really beautiful. So we'll get you and your wife up here sometime soon. Yes. And yeah, yeah, so I've lived here all my life, but I have traveled and seen some of the world and I'm excited to do more. And people know me either for a few different things. So uh, people in my professional life remember me as a safety professional. That's how I started my career was in the world of health and safety. And um, then I moved and then I, well, I moved up and then moved into a leadership and management, which I really liked. But then I came sick about after I had my kids, I started to feel sick and I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's autoimmune and, uh, and that, that process was so disturbing to get listened to, to get heard, to have Mm -hmm. the symptoms taken like, oh no, you're not just lazy or fat or like all those things this uh, medical gaslighting, I guess, I don't know, Yeah. yeah. Uh, that I decided to start sharing my story online. And then all of a sudden, there were so many people that started sharing their stories uh, that I started a podcast called The Flare Up Show, which is what I had you on. And we connected because you have Hashimoto's as well, right? Mm, so yes. And I, sorry, if that's like private health information, I just blew it there. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, I, I, I had another Hashim, and I think you and I talked about her, Susan BC, yeah. and we talked. And so, yeah, it, it's out. Okay, out good. Night, so good. Okay, good. So, FIPA <laughs> rules are, are broken there. And then, yeah. <laughs> and so I started this show, The Flare Up Show, and it, it's gotten a nice little following. And uh, I bring on just really cool people that have interesting ideas and different ways that they approach life, even with chronic illness or any type of adversity is really what it's turned into. So okay. I have I have people that um, share information and that. And then most recently, I just, through that podcast, I met a wonderful person who lives in Australia who owns a company called Ignite Purpose. And it's a human-centered coaching and performance, which is, it's like bringing the healing and transformation world into the corporate office as well. Okay. Uh, and so it's sort of, a combination so it takes all my professional background experience and my health coaching experience and it combines in one so she invited me to partner with her and launch uh her practice in canada with her so, so oh, that's okay. super excited so that's where that's where we're on to yeah okay. lots of stuff all right and i do want to pin that uh and we'll get back to that perhaps later mm-hmm. in the conversation to talk about uh ignite purpose canada mm-hmm. and maybe unpack that a little bit more <laughs> yes. um, yeah, because I think, you know, um, I, I did a, just a cursory review of the website and just uh, got familiar with it, but not enough. So I would like mm. to ask you more about that. And For that sure. may be something that people in the audience uh, would seek know. out too. And again, I'll have all that down below in the description field. Um, so I'm going to be a, a lazy uh, uh, um, <laughs> podcast uh, person. And and so I'm going to give you uh, an opportunity to pick what we want to start with do we do we want to talk about things like little drill down into like Hashimoto's and autoimmune conditions like your like you and I could um riff a little bit back and forth and then maybe the audience can get something from that does that sound like a good place to start yeah I think so okay. I think yeah. so absolutely right. okay. a lot of you know life your you, the way your body feels really colors everything in your life so I think it's mm-hmm. an excellent place to start Okay. So since you and I both are coming from a similar direction on that, (laughs) um, and again, this is for the sake of the audience, maybe I have a cousin, in fact, um, and hi, Patricia. (laughs) She sees this. She lives in Canada too. And so we talked immediately after, I think it was either your conversation or um, the other gal that I spoke with in BC. And and so we had like a good hour long talk because she just got diagnosed with Hashi. She's, and I didn't give a last name, so I didn't get her out of the closet. So, but anyway, (laughs) anyway. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the kind of impact this has. And so, so using that as an example. Um, so like when you were diagnosed, what were you presenting prior to that? What was going on? You said you felt sick and you were having some issues. Um, and let's compare notes. I mean, were you brain foggy? Were you um, feeling some metabolic issues physically or like for me, I have even um, abdominal stuff occasionally, mm-hmm. like you feel like you have gastritis or something. So let's talk to you. Let's get you to, if you're comfortable to uh, share of what you course. were going through and, and what's been going on with that. <laughs> of course, I'm an overshare. So most people are like, just <sighs> like, 
slice a little off that. Well, we can, I, tee, we can yeah. TMI here because we're helping, you know, we're, <laughs> we're getting it out there for people who are, again, maybe like this is where they a little first, squeamish, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, that's okay. Squeamish people will sign off and they'll leave. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. No worries. I, um, well, you know, it's when I was younger and we all have been young one day. Right. And, but when I was up to about the age of 30, I was quite healthy. I was very active and did a lot of outdoor sports and, I always had energy. I slept maybe seven hours a night and that was perfectly enough. And I was busy with career, all that good stuff. And then I got married and had a child. And all of a sudden I couldn't, you know, like, you know, when you're fit or like when things are going well and you don't have that experience of illness, you you sometimes have a judgment that people just aren't doing enough. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it, I think that was either my punishment or karma because I just could not force myself to get out of bed. I could not force myself to do exercise. If I did, it hurt. It wasn't the mm. same as before. Um, I started losing hair. My fingernails started getting brittle, um, having like IBS symptoms, right? And stomach pains and um, just not regular stuff going on there. I won't get into too much detail there. Yeah. Um, and just that fatigue and a lot of headaches and um, yeah, and fog, like, like missing words or like train of thought just gone out the door and unfortunately when you have a, a child or a baby and then two babies I had so then I had another one and unfortunately people go well yeah of course you're tired you're a new mom of course you've got some weight you just had babies right mm -hmm. of course you have all these things so it was really sort of dismissed for a long time um so that, that's sort of where the symptoms started and it took several years of going back to the doctors and advocating for something is not right. Something is not right. Something is not right. Prove to me that it's not this, this, and that, mm. that we finally were able to pick up on a few things. Hashimoto's finally showed up on a blood test. Sometimes it takes a while. Like, you, you know, what's coming, but it's just not, hasn't quite reached that level yet. Um, and I think, uh, and then from there, uh, uh, see, with the train of thought, gone, just gone. <laughs> Take your time. Take I'm used to time. doing the interviewing. This is easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny when you're in the other seat. Yeah, yeah like, what, what am I supposed to tell people? Yeah. Um, but okay, um, but it was, it, it was just, it was really interesting. Like I had a doctor that said, "Go do some Zumba and come back to me in a year and tell me that you're still not feeling better." And I was like, I, I don't like. Oh, I, I just like I feel like there's like I, I said this to on another show that I was on the other day I said it's almost like there's this tax on obesity and I'm not even like mm. look I'm fairly average so I'm a little larger but I'm like fluffy I'm, I'm a good size and uh -huh. fun size and they <laughs> but um but I'm not like like I'm not on a TLC show or anything yet and no <laughs> judgment to those people that are right <laughs> it came close during COVID I gotta say but I uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. who didn't <laughs> all that sourdough bread everybody was yeah, like, I, know, Here, like, I made cookies for the third time this week <laughs> anyway. like, how does this work do they call me or do I call them like yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah. so it was so this tax I call it this obesity tax so it's like financial tax because you got to spend so much more money on medications mm. and doctor visits and appointments just to be like no something's really wrong mm. and then there's like the emotional and mental load that comes with that as well like what's wrong with me like yeah. I'm a failure I'm doing this to myself somehow I just can't shake it off and I think when you're a high functioning person with a sort of a chronic illness sometimes there is that stigma right it's not like it's not like when you say I had a heart attack or I had cancer and people are like oh my god you need to take care of yourself how can we help when you have some of these illnesses it's like what's wrong with you yeah. snap out of it like, it's, all, it's in your head come on that two yeah. arms just do what you got to do like oh okay like, like yeah. it's very ableist society right so oh. and that was how I learned sort of the hard way because I was definitely one of those people before and um and that makes me feel really sad so I I think now doing some of this work being able to share my story being really open and honest about even my own judgments and, and stuff has really I hope it's helping. I hope it's somewhat making up for the time I ever, ever made anyone feel bad about their health in past that, oh. that they have a little bit of comfort now knowing that, no, you're not alone. You're not crazy. Yeah. You do have something that needs taken care of and you deserve to be taken seriously, regardless of what's going on in your life. Well, I would say 
given what you're doing and given your presence uh, in the internet ecosystem that, yeah, <laughs> you, you are, you're doing good work and you're helping you. people connect. Well, yeah, you're helping people connect with, um, you know, I say this in a, in a healthy way, like normalizing the experience. It's not normalizing the disease. It's normalizing your reaction to it. So it's building a sense of resilience to what is a crappy deck, you know, set of cards that you've been dealt. Uh, and it's not just Hashi's. So I would say, if I pause for a second, say to the audience, if you have Hashi's and you want to share thoughts and ideas down below, you got two people here. We'll commiserate with you because this could be interactive because I can send messages, uh, over to Chrissy. If you have other yeah. autoimmune conditions, arthritis, I've got arthritis, so I can <laughs> throw that in there. Anything that you're dealing with and you want to talk and share ideas down below that you think may, you know, please be constructive, please be pleasant, anything you can share. Uh, so I'll just do that aside real quick. But yeah, going mm -hmm. back, I think you're doing uh, a service and, you know, maybe it's karmically informed that, yeah, we were all <laughs> a little insensitive beforehand and you, uh, you know, and when somebody's in a wheelchair or whatever, you don't certainly do anything to you know no. upset that balance. But yeah, people who, so people with depression and people with anxiety, like, again, that's kind of ballpark because if you have brain fog and you're losing your mind because you're losing your mind, you're like, you know, uh, what's going on. So it, it draws the empathy out of us. I think it makes us, it slows us down. And like you said, we're less ableist and we think a little bit more about how behavior impacts people. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I agree. I agree. It humbles us, I think. Uh, it really or, does. Or people going through it. So <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, now, uh, so they, so you were diagnosed and um, I imagine you were put on a protocol. You're probably given uh, what levothyroxone or the, um, the MP, the, the more natural, if you will, uh, yep. thyroid. Did that, did that help? Because I know sometimes people will say, well, it's that plus, you know, and then it's, you know, we could go into diet and, and lifestyle and things. But yeah. so did yeah. you find some relief in the short term? Yes. So I did go on the medication. They just put me on the lowest dose now, just as a, a caveat. So I've had migraines all my life. So mm -hmm. if anyone's suffering from chronic migraine, that's something else. And I have polycystic ovarian syndrome as well, which can also deal with metabolic. So it's sort of like this doubling effect sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. So the Synthroid did help a bit with being able to function more presently and be more awake but I definitely had to start looking at lifestyle things because what was happening was I was taking that then the doctor's like well maybe you need Wellbutrin for more energy and then maybe you need this for more and I'm like <laughs> by the time by the time you're like my bedstand is filled with medications and I'm 35 years old and I'm like what the like yeah, no yeah. I don't want to live this way and yeah. not that there's any shame I think I still take medication to this day mm -hmm. and I take depression medication as well like take medication I'm not saying don't right but but there comes a point where you're like is there anything else I can do to maybe alleviate some of this you know proactively right yeah. if if I could go back and do it over again what would I have changed that I could maybe start doing now at least and start healing a bit because the body is pretty remarkable it can heal now you can't reverse some of these things yeah. you can make them you can put them almost in like a remission state yeah. where and I was able to do that and that started with um first I went plant-based and I know that's that's not for everybody it did work for me so okay. and so I, I cut out what I found was especially with polycystic ovarian syndrome there's so many hormonal issues and if you're eating animal products well they're they have tons of hormones too and they're mammals so it's going to affect you right so and i'm a mammal they're a mammal their hormones are the same as mine so if i'm eating yeah. them it's going to happen so i cut that out and that made a significant difference and within yeah. about 90 days my blood pressure went to normal and um i uh my insulin level started getting back to normal i wasn't on any insulin or anything like that but i was like pre-diabetic mm -hmm. not anymore and i started having a little more energy but also less inflammation because when you're when you when you are carrying a little extra weight and even hashimoto's and polycystic they're inflammatory diseases too so tendons and muscles have weird reactions and stress can hit you inside your body it, you get so sensitive to everything yeah. you have these physical representations so the inflammation started to go and i was like Oh, I can move a little more easily. This is kind of nice to, you know, get up in the morning and not be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. hurt myself sleeping somehow. Right. So I, uh, <laughs> so, so that's what I did there. And then from there, uh, the other real critical factor that was a game changer was now 
I don't know about you, but I tend to be a busy person and I like to be, uh, I'm always achieving. Everything's a race. So it's a race to heal. It's a race to be, you know, I'm eating all this plant-based food because I got to get healthy right now. And that <laughs> um, is when I learned about, when I went to, I went back to school to learn a bit about nutrition because the the plants made such a difference in my life. I'm like, I want to okay. know more about this. So I went to school and then I I learned from school about the parasympathetic nervous system and mm -hmm. i'm like oh i'm not taking any time to slow down and that could be an issue so yeah. that's when i got into yin yoga and doing that at night before bed and literally i had to slow down mm -hmm. in order to speed up my healing it was nuts it was like so backwards to what i ever thought i needed to do i just really needed to lie down more it was crazy yeah but it makes sense it really does because you're not giving your body that space to do its uh, repair and do its equilibrium seeking that it, you know, the, um, what do you call it? Homeostasis and things like that. <laughs> you know, it's not being afforded that opportunity. Yeah. And, but, and, and I know what you're saying, cause I'm super spastic. I'm like, bah, 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 all the time, <laughs> constantly. Right. And so I'm a poster child for that. But, and I did get, I got into mindfulness. I meditate about two hours a week. Um, yes. And it's usually just soundscapes. It's just something to shut my brain up for a moment. So I can get down, like you said, out of the, Oh, is it the parasympathetic mm. into the sympathetic or go down to some lower wave states or whatever it is and just chill my rear end out for a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so um, the yin yoga helped with that big uh, time, big time. And it, <laughs> and it's, it's enjoyable. So it's funny yeah. because when I first started doing it, I had gone to a wellness conference and they had a yin yoga and I didn't know anything about it. I thought it was going to be like regular yoga. So I assumed that okay, it's going to be hard, but you can do this, you know, it's a workout, but it was the opposite. It was like laying still in certain positions, okay. sort of like the Tai Chi of yoga. Right. So, mm. and you can use pillows, you can do it in your bed. And I'm like, this is working out. This is awesome. So, I, <laughs> so I start on YouTube, there's yoga with Cassandra and I'm not affiliated to her by any means or anything like that, but that was who I started watching. And, and that night before bed, I I'd be like the kids would be like what are you doing mom and I'd be laying on pillows and stuff on the floor and I'm like yeah. I'm working out I'm yeah. working hard here get out here yeah, 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 yeah. Like... <laughs> this is serious <laughs> it's like you're taking a nap mom <laughs> yeah totally totally but man does it there is something it took I started doing it about three times a week before bed and now it's almost like if I don't do it I can feel a difference the next day like it's the body needs to heal like we have like if you have cortisol and whatever running through your body and a stress hormone, if you're in a state of energy all the time, your engine's always going, your brain's always going, it, it can't sustain itself and certain functions turn off. So if you do raise your stress levels so high, it, your body doesn't know how to fall asleep anymore. Your body doesn't know how to digest anymore. Your body doesn't know how to heal pain or inflammation anymore. It keeps, it will keep sending you messages that there's danger and danger mm -hmm. and danger. And it becomes so much part of the whole experience of having a chronic illness. So that, that turning off the brain at night and doing it. And then the flexibility that came from that was nice too, because there, you, you do hold these poses. And even though they're very sort of passive, they are stretches. So you become more mobile, more flexible, more agile, which is, it's, it's actually pretty good for the body too, which is, which is really awesome. I need to look into that because I mentioned earlier, I have arthritis and it's in my neck and going yes. down my spine as we speak. Yes. And it's like, that would be nice. Yeah. To, Cause I find the best way to, to deal with my neck is to constantly do gentle uh, stretches yes. and extensions and things like that, just so everything can stay fluid and squishy and all that kind of stuff. So I yeah. get, I get where that yoga would be essential for, like you said, when you get out of bed and you got all this joint pain and neuropathy or whatever's <laughs> going on, right? And you're yeah. you're countering that, and like you said, you're tamping down the um, how shall we say it nicely that go getter kind of thing that's in us, you know, and uh, and part of modern life, I I suppose uh, that hustle, yeah, that yeah, crazy, hustle, hustle you gotta be hustle, hustle, hustle. Yeah. <laughs> Where did Definitely, that yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thirty years ago, computers are going to make life so much easier, and it's going to be great. <laughs> Trust us, you're going to just sit on your hammock and drink tea all day, and you know, right? Yeah. yeah. Thirty years later, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. But We're um, bombarded. Yeah. So did the Yin Yoga 
so we, we're going to have to bracket like and yeah. like, comfortable talking about mental health. Um, so let's talk about the mental health that's from the Hashis. And then if you're comfortable, we can talk about other aspects of absolutely. Uh, and I'm willing to, to be transparent and, and vulnerable, too, in that sense. So did the yin yoga break down some of what was going on, the feedback loop with I got Hashis, ment- brain fog, physical stuff, eh, life sucks, you know, so was that mediated somewhat by the... It- the yoga practice too big big time when okay. you do when you do the in yoga so it's sort of like meditation where you're checking in with your body okay but um but you're holding these poses for so long and it, it's sort of like you're getting to know yourself it's okay. sort of like 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 you know sometimes when you meditate and you start to have maybe even visions or like thoughts mm-hmm. pop into your head of like oh that's me and I love me like you mm-hmm. you start you sort of go through that same thing with yoga and as you're doing these poses and you're holding them for so long you start to kind of admire what you're able to do after a while and you okay. see the progress and I think that is a lot of it like when we have some of these illnesses these like Hashi's or autoimmune we're so hard on ourselves because we look like we should be fine, but you know, we're, we're, but we're, we're not right. We're like, we layer on top of not feeling well, that, that whole blaming game where we forget that we're still worthy of enjoying life and, and yeah. having a good life. And that there is a possibility to not feel pain 24 hours a day. We forget that, right. When you're in pain, it's so hard. Sometimes you get discouraged and you forget that, it doesn't always have to be this way. Now we're not going to go from zero to a hundred. Like yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do this and then tomorrow run a marathon. Right. But maybe uh, in a week from now, I could walk an extra, you know, half a mile or something, right? And it's those incremental steps. Yeah. And that's what yoga taught me a lot. That yoga practice taught me how to slow down everything and really mm-hmm. pay attention to me that it's not just my brain running around this world there's a whole body and we have to do this as a team mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so I don't know if that makes sense but that oh, definitely absolutely. helped the mental health stuff and um the other thing that I'll do at night too is often I put headphones in and I'll do a anxiety hypnosis as I fall asleep. So I have no idea if it's working because I fall asleep almost as soon as it's on now. I hear like the <laughs> I hear the first little like soft gong or Buddha bowl or whatever it is. And I'm yeah. like, I'm out. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some part of you is still taking it in though, right? Yeah, yeah. I hope so. I yeah. was I'm like, one day I'm gonna stay awake and make sure that it's saying good things because right, they do anything right. in those tracks, right? You will go <laughs> to your checking account and <laughs> get your credit card and <laughs> Give me some money. Yeah, right. I can't stay awake, so I can't stay awake. So who knows? What uh, yeah, right? listen but to it at seven in the morning when yeah. yeah, when you're wired and you're like drinking <laughs> coffee and you be like, okay, that's cool. I can deal. Yeah. Yeah. Not while driving the car though. Don't no, 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 yeah. no, no. But just to sort of hear the hear the uh, the dictation that's going on in the meditation. <laughs> yeah. And I do like guided meditations. I mean, if yes. you get the right person, the right voice, and and. They can take you in. Like I flirted with the jhana meditations not too long ago and some of that spoken word. And I'd like to get back into that because most of my meditation is is just noise. It's it's soundscapes that, again, shut things down. So there's not a lot of people talking I instructional. Yeah. And so I would like to re-explore that because I've had some really neat guided meditations. And like you, I just sometimes I black out and I just an hour later, I'm like, what? You know, where am I? You know, <laughs> oh, I either fell asleep or I went somewhere nice and but, uh, <laughs> happy place for a while so yeah so you've yeah. covered your your um diet your intake you've covered sort of the um mental which i would also tether to spiritual uh that you're getting your your being self um in a right place and a, and a better place and maintaining that right place so that's awesome um now uh let's talk about what you did, and we touched on this a moment ago, about you giving back, you being in the public commons, however you want to call that with the internet, um, and talk about, like, you and I probably have the same kind of backstory. It's like, I felt inspired to just try to do what I can in my own little way, again, with my show, uh, to bring interesting people on and have these conversations. And I suspect maybe is that what you were feeling? Like, okay, I went through the fire, I ran the gauntlet and got poked a bunch of times and now I want to come out on the other end is that where you were coming from with the development of uh uh, with your podcasting oh 
totally 100 percent. and okay. it's funny because sometimes i get asked by people who are like oh you have a successful podcast you know how can i do that like how much money can i make i'm like oh you think i make money doing that oh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> joe joe rogan yeah. makes money the rest of yeah. us are yeah yeah tom segura is like cleaning up but yeah, yeah. okay the some people us, make but yeah some do make some good money but yeah i'm but, sure i'm sure but I, but I always tease i'm like don't do this for money because it will get old real fast mm -hmm. and it's not going to be real fun to listen to right so yeah. you're not going to feel good about it and your guests are going to understand that it's, it's just not gonna so i'm, I'm yeah. pretty careful about who i have on my show too because i sometimes <clears throat> i like to meet them first often i have a good first impression just by looking at sort of their socials yeah um but i i like to make sure that you know they're genuine they're not just there to pedal something right. but they really have a story and it's funny when they come on like the other day I had a, a lady come on and and uh I think sometimes they get surprised and I don't know if I did this too but you're very open already so it probably wouldn't surprise you but some people come on sort of like with their prepared stuff and then you're like no we're gonna go deeper I'm pulling yeah. an Oprah or a Barbara Walters on you tell yeah. me why what that and then they're like oh, okay. <laughs> okay I'm gonna cry and then they the, 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 but then <laughs> But then afterwards, they're like, oh, my, that was so great. Thank you. I'm like, yeah, it should. Like, there's no shame. You should be able. It's such a power. That's the best part yeah. of your story, right? Is yeah. we always hear about the end or maybe the beginning. But everyone needs to know there's a whole middle part to healing and transformation. It, it It's not, even if it looks like overnight success, it is not. I mean, these right. things are years in the making. And people need to know the real deal. Like, what is the real story behind the story? So that was sort of where it came from, because I realized that I had quite a bit of, of a mask up and I was trying to create this facade, this this image in life that I was, you know, an achiever and I, you know, and, and you burn out and you, you do all these things. And when I finally started meeting some people that were so real, I felt, I felt like I gave me permission to be real. And I'm like... Yeah this feels so good, man. It's so heavy to carry the, all the other stuff. Right. Yeah. And so now I use that show and, and that's what it is. It's, it's just a very real conversation with many people about, you know, just real life things. And even if they are happily promoting something, we definitely get into some really cool, interesting topics just about human psyche behavior, you know, a lot about shame. It's crazy how many people are carrying around shame mm. uh, or, you know, trauma or PTSD that they didn't even realize that they had. Like, it, it's just, it's so nice to connect. And I think if you are going to do a podcast, I think the best part about it is the people that you meet. Like, I can't believe the relationships that I have now, just from being in that space, mm -hmm. I've just met the most fascinating people with so many wonderful ideas and ways that they're navigating the world. It just, it's just so exciting to see so much um, community instead of individualism all the time, which is nice. Absolutely. Yeah, I completely agree. I've recently been following this guy named Dave Snowden and he's a feisty Welshman. And um, he has some really interesting insights into mm -hmm. what you just said, like individualism versus a sort of um, collective social uh, species that we are, which we are, you know, we came yeah. up in, as a social species and we have to just acknowledge that. And I think for me, it's like balancing being the individual and being a part of a community. And you're really doing something right if you can do both. So the responsibility of being an individual, keeping your crap together, being a positive person if you can and contributing and then bringing that back to the community. That I think is the richness of the human experience that would be um, you know, something to aspire to. It's there's, you know, I'm not dictating it to anybody, but I just think that's yeah. a goal, a lofty one. I'm not great at it, but I try. I try, <laughs> I try to be aware of it and meeting, you know, like and so what's ironic about Dave is he's feisty. He likes to pick on other philosophers and yeah. get into little, you know, these kind of things. And which is fine. That's good entertainment. But I think at this at his at his heart, he knows uh that or he believe he walks his walk, you know, like in this kind of thing. So that's a good example. Um, and I had a great thought when you were talking. And I'll have to get back to it, I guess, because it seems to have slipped. If I can retrieve it without too much dead air, so that the audience <laughs> and you go down to like three viewers. Oh, I'll, I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. But yeah, so the takeaway is <laughs> yeah. That, let's see how let, do get some shots and let's see how drunk you can get by the time I remember. What we're I know. About. Oh my god! <laughs> but that'd be a drinking game, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want me drinking. <laughs> In fact, I I can't even drink anymore. I've, me I've, neither. Yeah, I can't. You know, I think it's, it's so my, sick. 
Yeah. Yeah. My brain is like, please, you did that for 30 years. You're fine. And I'm like, (laughs) but I'm German and Irish and Danish and all these drinking genes in me. (laughs) It's like, stop. I'm German and Uh, French. I get it. There you go. There you go. So, uh, but I get that, um, you know, again, from what I've seen of your work, that there is that desire to um, make this another form of healing opportunity for people that come yes. to the podcast that come to that. And I totally agree with you. If you're coming into podcasting to make money, like I've been doing it for two years and I haven't even thought about like trying to figure out how to make money. Like I haven't, <laughs> I haven't reached out to my subscribers and say, could you Patreon or could you buy me a cup of coffee or buy NordVPN yeah. or I'm, I'm sorry, I'm plugging these people, but uh, you know, any, cause <laughs> I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube and they're like Wondrium and Nord and all these things. And it's like, okay, Skillshare. Oh, you know, and it's like, okay, yeah. I, I know you have to make your money, but, but I think um, coming into it, like you're doing and and not to, you know, preen our feathers or anything. No, I just no, think, no, I no, think no, people no. sense that authenticity there that you're here uh, to be a, it's a community act. It's something that you're, it's a service way. I guess that's a good way to put it. community service. And uh, I like that. And I admire that. Um, so not about us specifically, but just when people can do that, they can enter into that space and give and not expect, you know, not expecting anything in return. So absolutely. Absolutely. I like what you said about, you know, coming together with our individual strengths. It, I mean, that, I mean, it, <laughs> when we were growing up in Canada, our, our geography class was always the States is a milk pot, Canada is a mosaic, which is kind of silly, but but we are kind of mosaics because we all do sort of have our own things, and we, but we need to feel safe enough to bring our unique selves in order to contribute to the whole. And mm-hmm. that's where that vulnerability comes in. But as soon as someone sort of goes first and breaks that barrier of vulnerability, then it just, it, it keeps going until like, everyone's like, okay, well now I can be real. Now I can be real. And there's nothing better than saying, you know, I went through something and then have like 10 people going, me too. I was just too scared to talk about it before. Like that's such a great, like you just like, oh yes. Like, yes, we can all learn from each other. We just have to yeah. stay connected. We have to figure out how to stay connected genuinely because that's the problem with the internet is it's a lot of it isn't genuine I would say there's a lot of yeah so it's like take everything with a grain of salt but we have to remember to stay physically connected to people in some way or form and that's like words to words you know Mm -hmm. eyeball to eyeball once in a while those kinds of things yeah yeah and so to get Barbara Walters and Oprah on you for a moment do you have (laughs) outlets in your in Winnipeg where you do get to go and and human and uh and socialize like because I, I agree, I think it's absolutely essential that, you know, I love being on the internet and and mostly I just do YouTube and I listen to lectures and I listen to podcasts and I listen to other people talk I and their too. ideas, you know, so, so, but do you have your time out where you go and you um, sort of rewild with, <laughs> with your absolutely, fellow humans? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, <laughs> it's funny, a couple of years ago, I realized that I had, this was just before the pandemic started. It was about a year before. And I realized that, through, you know, sickness, divorce, all these things that happened, I had sort of really like, just lived on the internet. Like I had all these Facebook friends and Instagram mm-hmm. contacts. If there's any young kids, Facebook is what your mom uses. And, right. And, like, Back in the day. Mom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my kids still do like, you're still on Facebook. I'm like, I will, I will be on this until the school again and you're back. Like, <laughs> all of my dinosaur <laughs> pictures are on Facebook. I mean, what am I going to do? <laughs> so. <laughs> so, anyway, so, and then I was like, I thought, I remember one day thinking, I'd like to go see this movie, but who would go with me? Like, I couldn't even think of one person I knew well enough to be like, but yet I'm talking to people all day long. I'm like, this, this isn't right. Yeah. So how do I start? How do I start? So I made a deal with myself at the beginning of the year, and I'm not usually a big fan of resolutions, but I did this year. And I said, I'm going to become social. I'm going to force myself to make some friends. This is our this is our year to make some friends. And so I made a pledge to myself, 52 weeks in the year, I would do one thing social every single week, whether it was out in public or calling up an old friend or even just visiting my parents, just something where I was out physically with other people mm-hmm. than myself and my children. And that was, a, that was one of the best years of my life. I had so much fun. Like I, we... <laughs> One of my oldest best friends, we reconnected during that time. We went to high school together 
and we hadn't spent a lot of time together and I had called her I said so I joined meetup and she's like is that a dating site I'm like no it's like people like me who don't remember how to make friends you can go and meet people and just watch a movie and then you go home after like it's awesome and so I I joined this meetup and there was this one event that said uh it's quite a funny story it was one event it was um it said uh jazz cafe night and I was like "Ooh, that sounds fun live band right and so I said to her I said let's go let's go it'll be so cool like smoky club it'll be so fun and um and we were both single at the time too. So she was like, yeah, let's do it. Maybe, you know, maybe there'll, there'll be some sophisticated jazz aficionados to hang out with. So yeah. we, so we go, we, we have the address and we pull up and we're like, oh, this is like a church. Hmm. And I'm like, well, maybe, uh, maybe they just rented a room. Like, I don't yeah. uh, but <laughs> so we, we're like, well, let's go in. We've already got the tickets. Let's go in and, and check it out. And <laughs> every every person in line in front of us definitely had gray hair like lots of gray hair and they were much much older than we were and it was funny so we were standing in line and I could see my friend kind of like I can't believe you dragged me to this thing because she was expecting a fun night out right right but then this old lady this older lady she's so cute she says to her husband I sure hope they're serving decaf coffee dear oh no and we burst out laughing. We just burst out laughing. And she looked at me, she goes, <laughs> part of my language, bitch, I bought a bra for this, a brand new bra for this. And <laughs> we started laughing. But you know what? We stayed, the music was incredible. Okay. We drank, we drank tea in the basement of this church with yeah. all these little old ladies. And the band was phenomenal. And we laughed our asses nice. off. We had such a good time. And um, like I share that story. I'm like, but but that was the year of like discovery and just remembering to play enjoy be present um make connections like friends Mm -hmm. friends are people that you should be nurturing relationships with especially the good friends that was definitely a good friend I wanted to really nurture a relationship with and and that was the catalyst it was such a great so yes so now I do things like um I definitely go for coffee with friends I do a lot with my my family and with that friend we usually hang out about once a week we play games or cards or we do something so those kinds of things. Tonight, I'm actually going with a friend to do some archery. So I'm going to be the vegan person shooting bows and arrows tonight. Thankfully, just at Target. It's not animals, Right. You're yeah, chasing squirrels around. <laughs> yeah, <or anything>. yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. That's a lot so, of work to try to hit something small. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> Big old Target down there and you're good to go. <laughs> small yeah. and running away. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's just a stationary Target. Oh, that's yes. neat. And, yeah. and and that's diverse too. You're you're getting into unfamiliar territory, which I think, you know, if you want to talk about uh, sort of a cognitive or neuroscientific um, uh, exercise for yourself is to do novel experience, like going into the church basement and drinking tea with octogenarians is It was awesome. so fun. Oh, so yeah. Fun. It's so fun. really scary and off-putting at first, but once you're down there, I had something similar uh, like 30 something years ago. I'd first moved to Florida and I knew old people lived in Florida. I was like 21 years old and I saw some, and back then this was, uh, for you young people, this was before the internet. And um, there was a, a, a ad in a paper for dance, some kind of dance thing, like a dance social, or I can't remember the context. It was either dancing lessons or it was a dance, yada, yada. So I was like, okay, I'm 21, just moved here. Maybe I'll meet some people and get my social thing on. And so I go to this uh, recreation center down the road from me in, in my town. I was 21 and everyone else was at least 60 years older than oh, me. They're all in their eighties awesome. and nineties, but it was so beautiful. I walked in and it was like 80, 90% women because once people get in their eighties and nineties back 30 something years ago, men died. They weren't just, there weren't a lot of them. So like four men there and then me and all these old gals, these old they must women. They so excited. Right. Yeah. And so they were from, they were born in the teens. Like, and I'm talking the, yeah. 19, the 20th century teens, the 1900 <laughs> teens. So, you know, cause they were in their eighties and the nineties. So, mm-hmm. you know, they were, they were born somewhere between 1950 and 1922 or three or whatever. Yeah. Beautiful women. And they taught me dances from when they were young. And so oh, we learned okay. the Foxtrot and the yeah. Lindy or whatever the hell it was and the music was awesome and so I'm dancing with these old gals and yeah I made the best out of it because I, you so know awesome 
oh yeah, yeah, it was a really rich experience. And I didn't do it again. I I, may, I don't know if it was a regular thing that they did, but it was such a nice little flashpoint in my history, my life. So I'm thinking of you when you were down in the basement and the, thank goodness that the jazz was good. Like if the music sucked, then I probably would have gotten out too. Cause like tea, <laughs> old people and crappy jazz. No. I don't know. The dainties were pretty lit. The dainties were pretty, pretty delicious. Dainties? So, yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Novel experience. <laughs> so wonderful. Getting out of your comfort zone and being in awkward social situations. You know, you hear that as a, a tag word with younger people. And it's like, oh, I'm socially awkward. And it's like, you know what the cure for that is? And some people do have some mental health. So I'm oh, not for sure. Trivial. Yes. But if you're just in that spectrum where it's like, you just don't feel right. And, you know, torture yes. yourself, go somewhere where you hate it and just sit with it, you know, <laughs> sit in the Exposure. fire. Exposure. And exposure then it, therapy see yeah. what happens and if it really sucks don't do it again but just yes. try it and again if you're dealing with something you know that's that you know don't don't listen to me but you know yeah. if you're just feeling like uh you know do it and uh, you'll be amazed because you'll never know how that'll shift your life and, and turn things around for you so i'll totally. stop preaching <laughs> yeah. no no it's so true yeah and i like <clears throat> i love music so i saw so many different bands i got back sort of into the local we have a great local music scene here nice. in Winnipeg. we also have a great comedy scene <laughs> so just just going to all these different things i went to a drag show comedy show not too long ago with some mm -hmm. friends um and then my my kids now are teenagers so now they like to go and so we try and find all ages events and nice. there's one local uh bar here that does all ages before 10 o'clock so they okay. can come and listen to blues or whatever oh. music they have going on we have a mardi gras band that's really good and that's a mariachi band that's really like so okay. so now my kids are getting exposed to this too and now they're like they're looking for things mom can you take me to this can we go to this can we like it's it's just so nice to be like yeah we don't have to just watch Netflix is great. There are days I love Netflix, but yeah. we, we, there's so many cool things that we can do right in our own backyard for very little money. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And to bring it all back to where we have been, the territory we've been in is this is so good for your mental health mm -hmm. to have that novel experience. And, um, you know, we've all dealt with depression or anxiety. Well, a lot of us have, and yeah, doing that. Um, and I, and there's some terminology that it, this is a great metaphor. And so people who follow some of the channels that I follow that are my subscribers, they'll know this kind of talk, but it's like when we're depressed or we're, we're addicted to something, we're reciprocally closed. We're convergently focused on something. And so when you can crack that out and pull the lens back, you know, cause the lens might be frozen into this narrow reciprocal closing that if you, this is what we're talking about getting out and doing stuff that you may not think you're going to like and bring it bring a wingman with you or a wing person with you and and like you did and have a friend with you so that's not so scary but yeah do that do that crazy thing and uh you know don't go to a biker club you know and get beat up <laughs> or or like me like going to a, a death metal concert <laughs> Yes. I, did, I did that a few years ago. I was, this was just before COVID started. It was like November, November of 2019. And I went to go see a death metal band and it was so great. You know, I got, you know, thrashed awesome. around and it was fun. And I get beat up again, like in the old days, you know, not, not, the not mean, like, yeah, yeah, not mean beat up, but just banged around a lot, you know? <laughs> and I was just like, ah, this took me back 30 years to when I was a kid, you know, twenties oh, and so yeah, do do crazy things. Don't go to death metal shows, but do crazy things and have oh, fun. Oh, you remind me of you know. So <laughs> when I was married, my my ex husband, my kid's dad, he is uh, he's pretty conservative, square, like likes to golf. It's just mm -hmm. really not much of a like listen like anyways. And he on the radio won a trip to London for us to go to the Download Festival, which is a big Ooh, metal. Yeah. Yeah, metal yeah. festival yeah and i was like yes but he was like which golf shirt should i wear and i was like oh <laughs> which golf shirt do you want to get mud and blood on yeah <laughs> but oh my god it, i mean it was just <laughs> that it was, you guys. but it was so fun like i had a blast he was kind of like what are we doing here like oh so this is half this is Oh wow! Yeah. So, but but I had a blast. It was so like Good. we saw like, we saw Soundgarden. So I got to see Chris Cornell before nice. he died, which was incredible. Yeah. Uh, we got to see Ozzy Osbourne and all of Black Sabbath. We got nice. to see Metall like Metallica. Oh yeah. Uh, Tenacious D. There was just so it was just the most incredible experience. <clears throat> but That's yeah, great. 
but That's it was great. prodigy as well that, that oh that was that was like so i used to be a raver back in the day when i was oh young. yeah so i, I remember, remember fire starter yeah, yeah. <laughs> i am a fire starter boy he was a he was a walking pharmacy for a while he i'm so was, glad oh. he was able to get himself a little straight did he pass or is he still he with did, us yeah he yeah i think pass. he passed recently, Just recently. bless his heart yeah I loved industrial music. In fact, yeah, I know. in fact, you want to talk about, you know, I'm older than you, but like reliving my youth, uh, I bought skinny puppy tickets. They're on their final tour. I don't know if you've ever heard of skinny oh, puppy. No. They're from BC. They, the guys live in LA now, but, um, skinny puppy was bad medicine, man. It's, it got me through some rough years, but it's oh, just very God. nihilistic, industrial, hard dance. Um, but it's very, it's, it's shock music to get you to think about. So skinny puppy is a term that they use for animal abuse, torture, vivisection, all that kind of horror that we do to lab animals and stuff. Yeah. They wanted to make that salient. They wanted to make that uh, well-known. And so for hard-headed Gen Xers like myself, who've seen too much violence and gore, they go one on, one step further. So their stage show is really graphic and really bizarre. And, and it, you know, if a conservative you know, 70 year old person walked in, they'd be horrified. They'd just have a cross out. And, <laughs> but it's the messaging is, is that, you know, they're talking about all the social ills of the world or yeah. whatever. So, yeah. but they're, they're doing their last tour and I, and my wife's going with me, bless her heart. Oh, so, so awesome. Yeah. Oh, I saw them 30. To... Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, well, have to, I was just going to say, you have to post something on your social so we can all have a, I'll take some pictures. Yeah. 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 Because awesome. the, the stage theatrics, uh, the guy that's the front man, his name's Ogre and, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Appropriate. And he gets all garbed up in weird stuff, caked in mud sometimes. And just, and it's just very shock theater and it's industrial dance. Um, and in the old days, it was really nice. It was very synth driven. And then they went a little harder as they got older, but um, yeah, so they're coming around. And like I, I was starting to say, I saw them about 31 or two years ago in Miami and that show was insane. And, you know, it's just, so it'll be fun. And I'll be in the back this time. I'm not going to be up front. No, <laughs> yeah, no. In the back where it's safe and I'll just sit and watch my show. I couldn't believe how course some of the fans were like at, at, at that, at that festival. Like uh -huh. there was people that were on like, they were, they were like on stretchers. Like there was people in the mosh pit that were like in hospital oh, yeah. stretchers with oxygen. I was like, wow, you guys are so dedicated to that's right. getting out. Like it was, it was nuts. Yeah. I've seen that before where there's uh, shows and they lift people up in the wheelchairs and they <laughs> crowd surf in their wheelchair to have that kind of, that's a truck about a trust fall or a trust yeah, fall. Totally. You got seven or eight people who are holding you up. <laughs> <laughs> and your wheelchair. I've seen that before. And, and it's in metal shows. In fact, you would appreciate this if you've liked heavy metal. There was the Deutsche Welt um, television channel. Uh, a new, it's a German newscasting service. And they did a thing last week, like a mini doc that was like 20 minutes long. And they're like, you know, metalheads are the happiest people, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and they were doing real clinical research on this and it's um uh, you know there's obviously dark stuff in metal no no denying that but the people that get into it uh uh it's cathartic it's you yeah. you get that shadow work out really quick and you go in and you get sweaty and you bang around with people and most everybody plays by the rules everybody's pretty nice and yeah there are things just like any other culture there's stuff Everything. where it gets weird and it gets bad and stuff like that so we I acknowledge it but just they were saying that you know there's a lot of these people they just let it out it's a steam thing and i think this is the same thing with raving like i used to love going to um what florida could do the best they could do for rays which were usually really lame like they had a smart drink bar and then they play music for seven hours straight and and, and you go home you know it wasn't like new york or la or any of the bigger yeah. cities but you know like, yeah, i can't I, say winnipeg was real cosmopolitan but. probably not yeah but we'd go to like coco beach or melbourne florida yeah. orlando or miami miami's raves were pretty good but yeah. yeah i used to love that techno club culture kind of stuff back in the day it was fun me too it was funny i we had i was with a, a friend of mine who's like so i'm gonna be 48 this year and i was with a friend and i was at her work we were having lunch and she has a younger co-worker and we looked at her and said hey what's a bar that we could still go to and dance and not get looked at like what are you doing here and she looked horrified oh, yeah. she's like Oh no, no, don't, don't. <laughs> it's like, okay, I guess we're not going to the club, but yeah. Oh, but now wow. they're, yeah, it was so funny. She was just so weird. She was like, you? No. <laughs> Oh my well, that's god! So hard. That's... I'm like, well, next time you're going, I'm definitely going to be there now. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to pretend to be your mom for now on. Yeah. Ah, that's good. Cool. Yeah, disturb <laughs> the crowd a little bit. Yeah. In fact, yeah. there was an, another documentary, and I don't remember who produced it, but they were talking about 
middle-aged ravers and they're yeah. and some of it was sad because there were still ravers who were doing a lot of drugs and i'm oh. like oh come on that's you know until you're about 25 that's fun <laughs> and once you're 25 to 30 start titrating weaning yourself out and then you know live the rest of your life eh, once in a while whatever but yeah. yeah there were older people doing x and things like that and i'm like oh that's kind of rough on your system at that age but Ooh. anyway but the, that stuff aside there were people that were just there were like middle-aged raves in england and these people like you know our age group that are just out boom boom you know and that yeah. would be fun i you know what i would love to do is some of the psi um what do they call them um uh there's a there's psi trance it's uh like 140 beats per minute it's um psychedelic trance techno mm. i i sit and watch them on youtube sometimes and they have these big festivals like in in brazil like azora and in in eastern europe they have them and it's just like three days I think it would be fun because I would want to experiment with group trance kind of yes. thing. Like, okay. A lot of people are going to be on drugs, acid shrooms, whatever, but <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go there sober. And it's like Sufic dancing. Like I'm thinking what happens when 600 people are in one space and the, the, you know, the, the driving rhythm. I and mean, this goes right back to when we were tribal creatures and yes. we, you know, people would either medicinally assisted or not would just spend all night just getting into this cadence. And that's like, again, Sufi dancers find their ecstatic, uh communion or whatever you want to call it in these in these trance states through dancing and through the music through the uh, rhythm and syncopation of that music so i always thought that would be an interesting uh, experiment to see especially somebody who likes mindfulness going to this thing and i would be you know, and so what's nice though is when you see the crowd shots that there are old people like me there you know it's like people with gray hair and then there's awesome. the 20 somethings and everybody's getting along nobody's having a good time yeah, yeah nobody cares who cares you know so, so i think that would be really fun if there's one it in would the, be. yeah if there's one in florida or the southeast united states this next couple of years maybe i'll go and take my wife and we'll dance if we want to dance and you know yeah, yeah. absolutely I, there's something primal about it right just yeah uh, sort of what you mentioned right like it's you're outside, you're with people, you're, you're nature, safe. your nature, your feet yeah. are literally on the ground and you're like, it's like mother's heartbeat, right? Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's very, very cool. Hey, yeah. Hang on one second. Hello? No, oh, never mind. I think okay. it's just my cat trying to get in. So okay. All right. <laughs> But that does remind me we are uh, probably on a time budget and I want to go ahead uh, and bring back, take the pin back out of Ignite Purpose Canada and maybe yes. we'll cover that for a little bit and then we can call this a, a wrap sure. and we can always come back for more conversation. Totally but, can. But yeah, let's, yes. drip, let's open that up a little bit and talk about that. Yeah, so it, it's a bit of a story, but so when we talk about illness and stuff, so last year... I was working for a company that was really, I, I would not call them employee of the year or anything like that. So I mm. try not to say too much about it. But anyways, it was, it was a very harsh climate, very icky environment. And when you talk about trust, vulnerability, safety, psychologically at work, it was definitely not there. Okay. And so I, <laughs> being at the age I am, even though I didn't have a backup plan, I'm still a single mom or two teenagers. I, I just couldn't do it. And I just, I told the management what I needed, what I was willing to do. They got upset. And I was like, then there's nothing more I can do here. Like we're done. So I quit my job on the spot and it was quite scary. But mm -hmm. um, through that, going back to podcasting, even this was all connects together. Um, I thought, okay, well, I have some time now and I have some employment insurance that I can use and I've got this and that. I have a little window of time to figure out what do I want to do? Like, mm -hmm. is this an opportunity or is this a problem? No, it's an opportunity. <laughs> We've got a little window. It's a little scary. It's dicey, but let's give it a shot. So I thought I, I really enjoyed my podcast. So I thought, you know, so far up until then, I had just sort of interviewed local friends and people that I knew that had sort of gone through similar stories. So it was quite small. And I thought, what would happen if I went thought a little bigger about it? And so that's when I went on Matchmaker. I love how they always make it sound like they're dating apps and they're not. Like I know, I tell that to people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I tell so my wife that, and she's like, okay. Yes. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so anyways, it, so it's a great forum. It was amazing. Yeah. And I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't expect much, but I put my little show up there and it was insane how many people were like, oh, I really like it. I listened to an episode. And then I would ask them questions and they actually listened. And I was like, 
oh, you actually listen. Okay, good. Yeah, let's talk. Like, because I never know if people were like, oh, yeah, I listen to your show. Like, just have me on. But no, these people were so, again, another community. And I was like, this mm-hmm. is so cool. So I had this lovely lady come on who had a business that brought, uh, she had a very personal story about transformation and healing, as well as she was now working in the corporate space uh, helping bring compassion back into the workplace, bringing the humanity back into human resources. And she mm. was working largely with Australian companies, but was starting to sort of branch out and work a little bit in the States and South Africa, because she's originally African. Mm-hmm. And um, so I had her on and we really connected. And I connected with a lot of people. <laughs> but, right. but when they connect back, because I'm like, oh, you talked to me, I'm your friend. But when they connect back, this is something special. This is exciting. So we um, we we connected and she uh, she liked my story. And right around that time, just after I published her episode, I got COVID and I got so sick, I almost died from it. And it was a neurological issue, not lungs. It wasn't cough. I yeah. I had something similar to serotonin syndrome and I, mm. it looked like I had Parkinson's. Like uh. I, I almost died. I was like, like I would have, if it had gone on any longer, I would have had seizures, but I had medical interventions and everything worked out, but it was a couple months of rehab. And so now I'm like unemployed and <laughs> right dying <laughs> and I'm dying and yeah. I'm the sole provider of these two kids. And I'm going, mm. Oh my God, life is crazy. Like yeah. I have no, you have no control. Yeah. Like uh, just the idea of, and I couldn't believe. So long story short. So learning that you don't have control and then accepting that you don't have control. That is a whole journey that I had to learn. And the cool thing about getting sick and needing her at the same time and all those things that came into place was sort of that radical acceptance of, you know what, just do the best you can, because at the end of the day, it's going to be what it is. And we don't know what's good or bad. Right now, this looks really bad, but maybe it'll end up being really good. And that's sort of what happened. It became the best thing that ever happened to me because she got concerned when I got sick. And then when she saw how what I was doing for healing from that illness and sort of like the thoughts that were coming about healing and transformation and learning about um, rather been being upset that I failed at that last job and had to quit thinking of it as like, no, you should be proud of yourself. You stood up for what you wanted. And that's mm-hmm. the first time, like you said, no, I'm not taking on someone else's stuff. Like yeah. I got my own stuff to carry. <clears throat> like, uh, so it, it, that all sort of gave me time that, that being forced to sit in bed and only have my thoughts to keep me company really was again, that slowing down, like you need to slow down. And if you don't, uh, the universe will make you slow down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so as I was going, she decided to have me on her show because she also has a podcast uh, to talk about, she, she has a healing show about healing. And so mm-hmm. she had me talk about the mind-body connection because she liked that I did yoga and she saw these things that I was doing. What was interesting about healing from that COVID was I had to slow down my mind to go into remission for my autoimmune but to heal from long COVID, I actually had to speed up my body, but slow down my mind. So okay. I actually had to exercise. So it was like, it was like when I had autoimmune, my brain had to convince my body that we were healthy. And then when I had long COVID, it was like my body had to convince my brain that we are still strong and healthy mm. because it, I was so neurologically damaged yeah. with, um, it was like paralyzing anxiety. It was nothing like I'd ever really experienced. So she had me on the show okay. to talk about that. And then at that show, I said, well, if you ever want to do this in Canada, because I really love the work that you do. I think uh, I worked for a company like that before was a professional advisor. And I was like, I, I love it when companies just do the right things for the right reasons. Like it just, you see the magic and you see how the business grows and Mm -hmm. it's like, it's so infectious and, and, and I get really enthusiastic. I'm like, it becomes a mission almost. Right. So I, I've always loved that. And I love working with companies that are like that. And uh, so I love the work that she did. I'm like, oh, that's the kind of practice I should have started. Maybe I should do one here. And she goes, why don't you do my company there? I was like, okay, oh, well, we can talk about it. I mean, I, I'm broke. I've got nothing to invest. <laughs> right. Yeah, you don't know, expect like, any I, seed I don't money. have a job. Yeah. I've been sick for three months. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. But, so, you know, and, and um, no, she sponsored me. So she has mm-hmm. provided all the, everything needed to start up. And we had our launch uh, just last week. And so now with Ignite Purpose, I'm managing director of Canada. And what we're doing is we're, we're just really helping people. And I love this. This is 
this is so important, especially if you do need to make a change in your life. Remember, like if you're unsatisfied mm -hmm. and I, you get this because you would have followed the same path. You, you start with yourself first. You don't try to change the world or change the people around you or the environment so much. You really go in real change starts when you start within yourself. So she's going into these businesses and teaching them how to grow themselves first, then how as, you know, more enlightened people <laughs> to mm -hmm. lead others well and help them grow themselves. And then in the end, how to bring it all together to make the team better together. And it's uh, it's just such an honest program. It's hard work because it's a lot of those companies come out and they get you all excited. You go for a workshop for a couple of days and then you get back to the same old office and desk and the same old person's gossiping, the same person's called in sick, like nothing changes. Yeah. But we got excited for two days. So we have a little yeah. more momentum, right? And uh, this is actually a program that has a lot of not not so much hand holding, but it's practical advice to use where real transformation happens over time. And uh, it, it's pretty unique. So, okay. so that's, that's sort of where we're at now. So now I'm just in the process of uh, just connecting with people and um, just looking for companies that are ready to do that kind of work that will benefit from that. And I think right now in the corporate world, it, it is really needed because the workforce is dwindling. A lot of us went through that midlife crisis during COVID, right? Like, what am I doing with my life? Because that was one of the first things when I got really sick and I thought I might die. I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to die here. I haven't done yeah. Like, yeah. is this the legacy I'm leaving behind is crap. This is not good. So like, yeah. but I've been chasing so many things. So I wanted to have meaning. That's really what came. Like, I want meaning. I want personal peace. And I want to make sure my kids know that they need to go for their own peace over everything else, right? Like, like that's what make they need to have love, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And um, I don't know where I was going with that. I lost my train of thought. But I am um, anyway. So I yeah, I jumped right on board, and um, and we're just really because I'm a safety professional. Uh, this is also called psychological safety. So it's actually it's sort of funny because it sort of takes my wellness, my coaching, but also my former profession. And we do healing and it's sort of like everything I've done in my life has sort of led up to this. Yeah. And now it's like all these things are happening. People are reaching out. I'm making more connections. And that's all just seems to be happening. There's no fighting. It's just organic, which is when you know you're when you have that ease finally after fighting with life for a little mm -hmm. while. It's it's mm -hmm. just such a peaceful, peaceful feeling. So, yeah, absolutely. I follow one guy and he talks about um Oh, he calls it the daimon and it's like you're working with the daimon instead of against it and that's what you know like you said earlier like the universe gave you a memorandum and you need to you know listen up because this is a this is a they call it pop quiz or a wake-up call or <laughs> dark night of the soul and so he talks about it in this other context that you know and young talks about carl young talks about this and it's the daimon and it's like the force of whatever you want to call it that matter uh is working through you and i think that's what you're sort of i hope i'm not projecting something onto you that's not no i, no, I think that's what it's it, so in other words the universe is working through you now and it's like you're in a co-creative co partnership with what you should be perhaps aligned to be doing and so i love that i think that's really neat and and um i think you know for anybody in the audience like if you do feel like you're you're not in your space or you're not in your sync with life or whatever, you know, think about these kind of metaphors, like, you know, the, the universe is expressing itself through you, or if you're religious, you know, God and all of that is moving through you. And the daimon is, as my one guy talks about. And I, I just like that um, because it's, you're in alignment. You know, a lot of people would say that, I guess you're in alignment. Absolutely. Like I love Brené Brown and she talks a lot about, um, uh, how things repeat right mm -hmm. and sometimes we go through things over and over again but they sort of get bigger or louder and I've had disappointments in life like we all have and sometimes you're like oh my god what am I doing wrong I'm here again I'm yeah. in the same spot and Brené Brown always says no <clears throat> it may look the same but it's not because you're not the same right? right like it's like you're leveling up and you're learning these skills and even though the circumstances may be the same you're going to go through it differently and then I saw this other quote that I love that I share a lot, especially about my story and just anything else. And it just brings me so much peace is uh, anything that does not end in love will repeat itself until it ends in love. And mm. I think, but I think it means love of 
for yourself, for your life, for your spirit. Like it's really like, it's not about romantic love or anything. It's just like peace and love for the process to embrace your whole self all the good the bad the ugly stop labeling everything and just be like no I am not broken I am totally okay and regardless of the rough road it's taken I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be in this this moment and I I can get through it so no Mm -hmm. matter what brings yeah no I love that I love that and it speaks to so many wisdom traditions they all kind of point to that to love or or they'll call it the good you know or god or whatever you want to call it and it's that just that completion of it's a satisfaction uh to to quote one philosopher it's like a satisfaction when when a process is completed and you know it's done in love it's done Mm -hmm. in good faith and done with um positive aims uh so that so that the person's or the person interacting with the world or other persons, um, like you said, they they find that they land into this sense of, you could call it satisfaction maybe, but it is yeah. love. It is the completeness. And, and I think love is wholeness. You know, love is in a sense, uh, kind of wholeness, uh, which, you know, when you're not feeling whole, of course you don't feel love or you don't feel the light or the good or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, that, no, that, that all makes perfect sense. And what a wonderful thing to acknowledge or to be aware of in your life and in our lives as people uh, to have that wisdom that uh, it's about that. And sometimes you got to go through a lot of hell, you know, like you said, things like Brene Brown was saying it and Nietzsche calls that the eternal recurrence, which, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to take that too literally, but it's the, it's the repetition. You're in the hamster wheel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, You're in a hamster wheel and it's does, it feels like that and it's treacherous, but you know, I guess, you know, and again, using the universe through you or the diamond that if you recognize what's going on and you, you try novelty, you try to uh, maybe expand your quest or your, or your, your solution thinking or your problem solving that that's, you know, a kind of love for yourself. It's desiring to, to do better for yourself. And and to finally realize that you're, you're not doing anything wrong. Like you're, you're just in the process of learning things. And once you learn to just have a little space for yourself and a little bit of grace to go, Oh, I don't need to feel like I suck because this has happened again. I just yeah. need to accept. And then, then you feel like so much lighter and you're like, okay, like it's just, it's just taking it as it comes and doing yeah. what I can <clears throat> with what I've got. And I'm doing the best that I can. Yes, absolutely. And I thought of something that we were talking about earlier that you had mentioned and it was re- in relation to your podcasting. This is probably what I forgot earlier to talk about when you had just <laughs> told me about like, you know, what you were doing with your podcast. And I think this is an interesting thought. I was, I follow one guy on YouTube and he was talking about a particular um, fallacy. uh, And I think it was an informal fallacy and it's called the survivor fallacy. And I think the self-improvement industry is fraught with this kind of survivor fallacy. So I'll use an example. You go on Billy Bob Johnson's, you can do it with your quantum, you know, you know, whatever (laughs) shifts you're going to do. And so he has a lot of testimonials and a lot of people are like, man, Billy Bob Johnson, he taught me all this stuff. And man, look at me, I'm six figures from a loser to six figures, or, you know, I dropped 180 pounds and, you know, or, you know, I got tall, you know, whatever, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and so those anecdotes are great, but those are the ones that out of 10,000 people, they're the outliers that, you know, every you know, if you get into basic statistics, you have 10,000 people, <laughs> there's the fat part of the bell curve, and then there's the outliers. And so if you videograph the outliers and their testimonials, so that's what he's talking about in the survivor fallacy. And I, it dawned on me, I'm like, oh, shoot, this goes back to what you were saying, that it's good to have people on who say, man, I effed up so many times, and I'm still not there. I, I'm not, you know, this wonderful thing. And I'm a creation in process. And so I, I felt that when you were talking earlier. And that's, again, I couldn't articulate it earlier, but it popped back into my head. I love that. I think that's really rich that um, we do bring people out and we say, hey, listen, there's a lot of, you know, it's not always about success. It's about just, again, loving yourself and being the as whole as you can be that day. 
a redefining of what success actually is. Yeah. Is it money and fame and fortune? I, well, I'm, I'm sure my life would be easier in a lot of ways if I was rich and famous. However, this, yeah. like you like you said earlier, your baggage still goes wherever you go, right? So, like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Maybe maybe we need to redefine what success means. Does success yeah. mean I feel good about me and? my family feels safe I have relationships and connections I I get outside I I get enough sunshine and water like a good you know human house plant like like yeah. like, like like is that enough like what is enough like yeah what, and it's okay to want more and it's totally okay to strive for goals but it's also okay to pause for a second and be like yeah I kind of like this too so yeah yeah and I think there's a happy balance. Like, yeah, don't be shy about earning a good revenue for yourself and feeling like you deserve some. But it, like you said, it has to be more holistic. I think uh, success is uh, an internal flame of happiness, an internal sense of uh, being connected to others genuinely. So like if you're super wealthy, you know, who are your friends? You know, they're, they're leeches or they're, you know, trying to get something from you. It's just, you know, it's like the beautiful people. It's like yeah. men, and, men, women and persons who are beautiful. It's like, do they like me because I'm a thoughtful person and I read William Blake and I know, you know, no, they like you because you have a certain physiological thing that they want to exploit, you know? Yes. So, so we always have to like say to ourselves, you know, well, you know, monetary wealth is, yeah, again, yeah, whatever, you know, but it's not everything. I've worked for, I had the, the business that I'm just getting ready to get yes. rid of. I work for a lot of wealthy people and some of them mm -hmm. are just miserable. And I don't mean that in a negative way. It's just, no. they have the same crappy issues. They're like, and, and sometimes we're their psychologists when we're doing, I do landscaping. And so I'm on the property and I'm doing things and they come out and they just start fessing up. <laughs> and I'm like, and you become their therapist for 20 minutes. My, more my wife, because she's <laughs> more empathetic. I'm, I'm kind of hard headed. I'm like, you know, I try to, engage but she's a good therapist you know and yeah. so so and they have tons of money but they're still fraught with things and it's like okay yeah. you see that and so great that they have tons of money but they're dealing with the same stuff you know not the same stuff that super poor people are dealing with because no. <laughs> they have ten thousand other problems on top of yes. mental health issues they're dealing with how to feed themselves and how to kill the rats in their apartment or whatever you know so so there's obviously qualifiers and all of that but I yeah think so yeah it's that external yeah you know recognitions that external locus of control that external like what is on the outside is what matters but it's yeah. that grow yourself again it all comes back to yeah yeah indeed indeed let me ask if you have anything else you'd like to present to the audience in this conversation any last thoughts or ideas um, we, <laughs> yep yep we've, I don't, we, we've, we've, we've covered gotten, a lot yeah and yeah, I think I think people can clue into the fact that I have ADHD. So if you ever want to talk about ADHD, <laughs> we can do that. They're probably like, that's kind of a little bit of a wild podcast. Yeah. Just a little, a little I love there, that. There. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah that. Me too. Some people probably don't, and they'll be the ones that don't come back, you know, and that's yeah. <laughs> Because there's a lot of ADD going on out there, and 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 it's not even like wired. I think our culture, because of the immediacy of uh, technology and mm -hmm. everything, is so rapid fire. Like you were saying, hustle, 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 and it's hustle. it's breeding a kind of exogenous <laughs> ADD reaction in us. You know, like we're boing, 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 like a little Jack Russell Terrier. Little so I chases. let it. Yeah. yeah, I let it go in my my. I had a woman on a few weeks ago, about three or four weeks ago, and she got off the podcast. She goes. I feel really bad. That conversation was all over the map. And she's a, <laughs> a college professor. I said, listen, this was perfect. And I hope you felt okay. You'll walk away feeling okay, because I like that. I want to move around. Now it can get out of hand, but yeah. you know, you and I didn't, we talked about concerts and music, but whatever, that's part of the human experience. So yeah, I love it. I love it. it you know, within constraints, the, that ADD thing. And, and again, I think people can they're fine with that. <laughs> I, I think, I think people like hearing that people are human. Like yeah, it's, yeah. I know I do. It's I'm, not I'm slick and more. polished. It's not oh. slick and polished. Oh, yeah. That's not real life. Yeah. Two that human beings messy. having a spontaneous conversation. <laughs> get up, buckle up and get on along the ride. Yeah. If you don't like it, I'm fine. You know, I, I, I'm not fragile. <laughs> you can tell me I suck in the comments and that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. And, don't and, say and Chrissy I'm, sucks. Cause I'll tell you bad words, but yeah. No. And, and um, yeah, yeah, just, I think, <laughs> So I think the most important thing I always try to leave people with is for a long time, I didn't really know how to have fun or allow myself to play because I thought I had to be serious to succeed. Mm. And I thought I had to be very like focused all the time. And I really lightened up. It's so funny because like the worst things in my life have happened in the last 15 years, but it's also been some of the most fun, like 
I laugh more than I've ever laughed and there's so much more joy and there's joy in little things. So I think people should never underestimate the ability to play and, mm -hmm. and what play and creating those little pockets of happiness, whatever it is, like just, just do it. Just try to enjoy the ride because you're in the roller coaster. You're not getting off it till it's your time. So you may as well take a look at the scenery a little bit. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, amen. <laughs> I, I say, I echo that, but then, yeah, no, a, amen. Absolutely. And I think, you know, adversity uh, can breed character. It can break you and it can take you down some, into some dark places and you may not be able to, you know, take out, come out of that spiral. But I think uh, adversity breeds a kind of resilience and a kind of character. And, you know, you have people in the world that can help you even if you have to hire them. So if you're going through the dark night of the soul, you're going through that really rough patch in your life, you know, like the Grateful Dead song, help is on the way and just be open to it. And, and, you know, don't go into the, be in the darkness, but don't become the darkness and just be open to it. And like you said, some of the worst things that have happened were the things that were your teachers that showed up and gave you these things that you can now use to your advantage. You're going into a new chapter of your life. And these are your masters now that are standing behind you and they're they're you, you're working with them now. So, yeah, yes. I would say that. But, yeah, to the people in the audience, if you're listening, there's there's ways to move through it. Um, yes. It's, it's, it's so, yeah, Never absolutely. Alone. Look, look yeah. for look for support. Look for a loving community that can take care of you. Mm -hmm. So. Chrissy, it's been a great conversation. I uh, thank you. I knew it would be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I knew I knew it would be fun because you and I had already talked once before. Yes, we had, a, e we had a blast. Yeah, yeah, it was a neat conversation. So maybe we'll give it some time. You work with um, your new project, what you're doing there, and um, you can come back and tell me some stories about how Ignite Purpose Canada is changing, shifting, doing things. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. maybe next year we'll bring you on, bring you back, and and chat and uh, check in on you and see what's going on. Yeah. All right, Sounds Chrissy. great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I'll say goodbye to you once we're done recording to the YouTube audience, that 10% of you who always hang out to the end. Bless you guys. Much love to you. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you in the next interview. So hold on one second, Chrissy. I'll stop recording here.